Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. You know something? I fucking can't stand people. You know, I'm all excited. I'm all excited about getting a Ford F-250, right? So what does some asshole do? He goes out. This is what he says. Ford Super Death Wobble. Hey, Billy Tonka tits, you should be aware of this Ford Death Wobble and get a cyber truck instead of that dumb donkey cart. This fucking cunt goes out and just fucking Googles people dying in Fords. Like, you can't do that in every other fucking truck. Jesus Christ. Remember that fucking, that, that, that guy with the T-shirt company and that actor died in a Ferrari? The people tell me not to fucking, you know, go on set and drive a Ferrari? Shit happens. All right, let's see here. Open the link. Here we go. This guy just killing my dream. Bill's excited about it. Tr- uh, the truck in the foreground was trailed to a work site today for a photo shoot. The F-150 truck in the background was driven to a site to help build. Translation, Ford executives are scared shitless about having real competition for the first time since the chicken tax. I don't know what this means. Okay, the truck in the background driving to the job site. What am I looking at? Something went wrong with this? No, did Ford shut it down? Uh, Meanwhile, the bad news continues for Tesla compared to the competition. Falling behind. Here's a bad one about Tesla. Dude, go fuck yourself. All right, this is the truck I want. I know inherently everything is dangerous. Okay? I accept the risk. Oh, God. You know something? That's actually, I'm glad you wrote that in. That, that is a great, that is a great uh, life lesson. That when you say out loud that you want to do something and you're excited about it, uh, people immediately try to bring you negative information so you don't go out and do it and be happy. Now, they'll paint themselves as heroes like, hey, I was just looking out for you. The fuck out of here. You know, did you look at look up anything else? Yeah, Fords have had problems. Every fucking car is out. Every car, every car company has had recalls. All right. As long as the gas tank isn't like the way it was on the fucking Pinto or the, the Crown Vic, I'm good. I'm good. I drive like a fucking old man. There's going to be no death wobble as I go down the street with a fucking dopamine grin on my face when I get that fucking truck in the color that I want. Sir, can I, can I just, can I have this? Can you just let me have this? All right, Gen Zer. Oh, Generation Z. Let's look this up. Let's see where the Generation Z people fit in. Nice to hear from a Gen Z person. Gen Z years. Okay. I like this understanding Gen Z's, Z people. How the fuck are you going to do that? All right. Uh, they are currently between age uh, 6 and 24 years old. Nearly 68 million in the U.S. Okay. Well, Welcome. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Gen Zer, and I want to bring a little firsthand experience to the podcast. You've said that the generation after the millennials is much cooler, and I'm sorry to tell you we are not. Oh, no. The same division and extreme opinions on everything is plaguing my generation. Don't you think a lot of it, though, is the fucking Internet, and a lot of it is the um, 24-hour news networks, considering, you know, COVID affected everybody, and we, we just could not get on the same page. And I'm not even talking about the left and the right. There, there was subsets within the left, subsets within the right, subsets within the subsets. It was just crazy. Anyways, he said, a friend of mine got kicked out of public high school for calling his locker retarded. A girl nearby heard him and said he called her a retard and made some inflammatory hand signals. For some context... He is the only broken locker in the hallway, and the lock doesn't work, so his books have been stolen because of it. Um, Well, yeah, that's terrible. But, I mean, didn't you guys learn all of this from older generations? I just hate how everybody's ratting everybody out now and acting like it's, I guess it's like their feeling of power. I mean, I can tell. Wait, look, if this shit went down the way this went down, like, you know, she shouldn't have done that, but she's also... You know, in high school, her brain's still developing. She's on social media and all this shit. I just don't think it's good. I have empathy for you guys. 
Um, we're not allowed to listen to music on school grounds because one student complained that the only music they hear on campus, campus promotes American exceptionalism. Oh, brother, what? They couldn't say rap music or trap music because it would point out that predominantly black music was the problem, so they did it under the guise of American exceptionalism. Jesus, these racists are getting fucking educated. That sounds like a lawyer. American exceptionalism. Don't we kind of have to have that the way everybody's been shitting on us around the world? I mean, we got to do something. That could be. Everybody just thinks we're fat and dumb walking around with a gun, riding a four-wheeler with your dick out. Um, not to say you ain't allowed to do that. Uh, we're not allowed to use any hand gestures during sports. Thumbs up, thumbs down, doesn't matter. All are considered too dangerously close to white supremacist symbols. Well, that's not your generation. That's just corporate lawyers trying to, uh, you know. A lot of it becomes corporate lawyers trying to head off everything at the pass. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all money driven. That's the funny thing about all this shit. Most of these, all of these decisions, like them kicking that kid out of school with the locker comment, it has nothing to do with that girl's feelings. It has to do with they have to do the right thing so they don't get sued. Anyways, she's, this person says, uh, he or she says, I, as an Asian American, was told that I was not allowed to answer more than one question in class per day because I was making other honor students feel uncomfortable with my aggressive level of competitiveness. Wow. The teacher has enforced this with me, but has allowed the honor student and others to answer multiple questions. Oh, because you're Asian and, and they just think you're going to be smarter than everybody else. So fucking weird. Note, I never raised my hand more than once or twice a class, and usually it was because no one else would. I wish you were right, but my experience tells a different story. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Well, <clears throat> first of all, the only thing that made me happy in all of that, all of those examples, were that you actually said go fuck yourself. So they haven't killed you off spiritually. Um, listen, you're in controlled environments, but I don't think that that, you know, needs to affect your everyday life or whatever. When you guys go to hang out or whatever, I would try to just open dialogues. Uh, then what other kids tell on you? Oh my God, it's just become this whole fucking red scare. Everywhere you go, it's just people telling on other people. I can tell you this. How I've reacted to all of this shit is I just continued to, uh, you know, I'm not like I don't try to improve as a person. I am trying, but like, you know, I know the intent of what it is that I'm saying. I'm not being malicious. I'm not saying I can't make a mistake and I can't fucking cross a line here or there. But if I do, you know, I'll own up to it. I'll apologize. But like this whole fucking thing, you crossed the line and now you should be just eliminated. Is uh, That is the perverted sort of like hardcore white chick fucking thing where they're not really going down for this cause as much as they are as trying to remove white guys that are in the way so that they can then be the toxic person running shit. Um, which is my prediction of what's going to happen is that they're going to remove all of these people. And it's going to be like, we're going to have diversity. Da, 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 da. And you know what that means? It means it's going to be a bunch of white chicks getting all the, the good shit first. And then what's ever left over, they're going to give to people of color. And then it's going to take a long while before it slowly turns, before you're able to, con to really constructively go, aren't they doing what white males did, but they just have a vagina so nobody could say anything? Uh, I think there'll be a little bit of that. That's my prediction. What do I know? All right. Boyfriend doesn't want to get married. He doesn't want to get married. Hey, Bilford, I love the podcast. Thanks for being yourself. I was hoping to get some dating advice. All right. Well. I'm a fucked up dude, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years and living together for a year and a half. I'm 31 and he's 38. We both have educations and good jobs. He doesn't want to get married and he's 38. Yeah, you got to kick him to the curb. He ain't going to get there. Um, he's a great guy. He's not going to get there in a time where you still have, like, if you want to have kids, I would guess. That's my first, that's the first thought I had. He's a great guy. He's very sweet, respectful, and makes me laugh. 
His family is lovely as well. He's a musician and loves music as much as I do. I love our life together as it is, but it's our future I'm worried about. I want to get married and have a kid or two. He's indecisive about it. He's an indecisive person in general. I've dropped some heavy hints and frequently talk about a hypothetical future when we have kids and we're married, but he's just not into it. Yeah, he's not into it or he's afraid of it the way I was. Um, but I can tell you, like, it's, it's added to my stand-up and all the creative things that I do having kids. So maybe you can tell them that. Because um, I know with a lot of people in this business trying to make it, you try to travel light because you feel like, I got to get to this certain place and then I can actually have a life. And you think you're getting to that place is actually going to bring you happiness when what really could bring you happiness is just finding love, you know, and having a couple of kids and trying to make sure that they have the best possible childhood will fill you up so much more than all of that other dumb shit, which took me half a century to fill up, figure out. Um, Anyway, uh, I've tried to be being extra sweet, cooking all his favorite meals every night, making sure the house is always clean and babying him when he gets sick. I'm even supportive of his dream of quitting his good job to be a writer and a musician. However, all my efforts don't seem to be working because he is still isn't willing to compromise on the marriage and kids thing. It makes me really sad, especially the kid part. It worries me because, well, biology. I'm already 31 and I can't be waiting forever. My family and friends say I should give him an ultimatum, but I don't want to because, one, what if he calls my bluff? I I love him and I really want to spend the rest of my life with him. Two, I have pride, self-esteem, and self-worth, even though I'm not exactly God's gift to mankind. What are you talking about? You're a great, you sound like a great person. I'm not a piece of shit either and shouldn't have to threaten a man to marry me. Am I doing something wrong? Am I being nutty or do I need to move on? Fuck you and thanks. Um, I don't think you're nutty at all. I think you, you don't have to put pressure on him. Just say what you just said to me. Just say you not you being unwilling to compromise about getting married and having kids makes me really spad, sad, especially the kid part. You know, I don't have all the time. This is what I want and I want to do it with you. Okay? And... I don't want to give you an ultimatum, all right? I just want you to be honest with me, okay? And then tell him, this is, this is when I want to do this, by. Which also gives him another way to fucking string you along. And I would just say, listen, it's going to break my heart to leave you, but I am not going to be childless. That's not what I want. That's not going to make me happy. I want to get married and start a family with you. Do you want to do that with me? Okay, and I have to be honest with you. His answer, if if it's yes, would be right then and there. If he's like, you know, I just don't fucking do it, I would leave, leave, and go through the fucking heartbreak of that shit, rather than live a whole life of wondering what could have been. All right, that's my advice to you, and never feel bad for expressing your feelings, and and you don't have to give ultimatums to people. You just tell them how you're feeling, how what they're doing is making you feel. And they're either receptive to it or they're not. If they're not receptive to it, you know, you got to get to someone who's going to be receptive or that's going to be your day-to-day existence, which is going to drive you into depression. All right? And if they want what you want, the cart moves forward. If it doesn't, hey, you know, no hard feelings. This kills me to do this, but like, you know, I want what I want. And what you want is just as important as what he wants. So... That's the deal. You get with somebody, you got to want basically the same shit or it's not going to work. All right. Sorry you're going through that. Good luck to you. All right. Groomsman. Become a grooms woman. Grooms man be- became a grooms woman. Uh, <laughs> hey, Billary Swank. I'm getting married this summer to my beautiful girlfriend of eight years. We're having a family small wedding. So I was planning on inviting my three best friends from high school to be my groomsman. One of my friends... Anna came out as trans over a year ago, and we all support and respect her decisions. I invited her to in January to be one of my groom's people along with my other two guy friends. All right, so what's the problem? However, just this past week, one of my guy's friends also came out as trans. What the fuck? And plans to be transitioning from male to female. Now my groomsman went from being one woman to and two guys to two women and just one guy. I was already stepping out of my comfort zone by inviting Anna to be a groom's person, and now I feel like I can't uninvite the other guy because I already told Anna she could join. Yeah, and this is another thing, too. This is something that you would really get trashed for, for being, like, transphobic and all that. You're just being honest. 
okay? These are two people that you knew as guys who are no longer guys, and now you have to emotionally deal with it. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not saying what they're doing is wrong. You're just saying it makes you uncomfortable. For some reason, you can't say that now. Or you can say it, and everybody gets all, you're fucking homophobic. Um, anyway, it's, it's less about, or transphobic. It's less about them being trans and more about just me not wanting to be surrounded by women during the ceremony. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty traditional guy, despite my friends, and I've always imagined the classic group of groomsmen at my side for my wedding. Also, not to mention, Tim just recently started transitioning and is 6'3 and might look a little out of place in a dress. <laughs> All right, you're walking the line here. Just invites, just, you know, expand your draft picks. Pay for a couple more meals, get some more fucking swinging dicks in there. You got some dresses. I think you got a nice salad going on there. Uh, I love my friends, but I just don't want to be the focus to be about them on our wedding. I asked the person if they'd feel comfortable in a suit for the ceremony, and they said probably, but may change their mind closer to the wedding. Is it wrong for me to put my foot down and just say they need to wear a suit or step out of the groomsmen party? Any advice would be greatly appreciated, and also go fuck yourself. Well, you know, this is one of these things where a, a wedding is her day. And what you're doing right now is really bride behavior. Like you're picking the colors you want to know how they dress. And I don't know if we're really going to be progressive. If the woman can do that, can't the guy do that? Um, This is what I say you do. I say that, you know, you, you have the wedding that you want to have because it is your, it is your wedding. And uh, and the way you want to have it is the way that you want to have it. And, you know, you don't seem like you have a problem with what these guys are doing. And now that are now women, the days, whatever the fuck he's supposed to say. So I would just try to have the wedding that you want to say. Everybody's still fucking invited. Not the wedding you want to say, the wedding that you want to have. And then just just take it from there. I mean, personally, uh I'm trying to think. I I don't know. I I don't know that. I haven't been through what you've been through. Like if I had like two of my close friends that I was growing up with, all of a sudden were transitioning. I mean, that's, that's a fucking major thing. Um, I would think emotionally to deal with because it's like the other person doesn't exist anymore. You know? So you got to kind of take time to process that, which is something I think is missing in all of that. Because I really think, you know, you should support somebody if that's what they want to do. And, and still be friends with them and all that type of shit. And then I think conversely, they should give you a second, you know, to be like, okay, let me, uh, let me get my head around this thing, you know? So yeah, I, 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 but I think in the end, dude, this is, this is your wedding. This is your wedding and you should have your wedding the, the way you want it to be and the way that you want it to look and everything. And I think if you're still going to be friends with them and all of that shit and you, you're not being going, Oh my God, that's against God and all that dumb shit. Uh, I think this is a small ass to be like, can you just wear a suit? I don't think that's a big fucking deal. I really don't. Or maybe you slide them over to the other side. They become bridesmaids. And, you know, with any luck, two of the chicks transition over to your side. You know what I mean? It's like a fucking NFL trade. Two for two. All right. Girlfriend wants me to move out. Dear Billy Longnuts. (laughs) Is that an age joke? If that's an age joke, that's fucking hilarious. Uh, I'm a 21 year old college student. Um, that Billy Longnuts is fucking. If that's because you're old and your balls are hanging down low, that is fucking hilarious. Um, is that my Native American name? Him, him, Billy Nut- Longnuts. Um, all right. I'm a 21 year old college student, and my girlfriend and I have been arguing a lot because she wants me to move out of my parents' house into a house share. So that we can be closer. Wait, 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 wait. I'm a 21-year-old college and my girlfriend and I have been arguing a lot because she wants me to move out of my parents' house. Oh, I thought she meant she wanted you, her to move out. You guys were living together and she wanted you to move out. I was like, all right, you're 21. Some, some of the great, greatest news you could ever get. All right, she wants me to move out of my parents' house into a house share so that we can be closer. We currently live 40 minutes from each other. She makes ominous statements about the practical practicality of our relationship. And if I don't move and catch and, 
and catches an attitude because of it every time we meet up or talk on the phone. It's getting exhausting, and I feel a lot of pressure from her constantly bringing it up. All right, and how does that make you feel? Do you like feeling pressured? Do you like somebody giving you an attitude because you're doing what it is that you want to do rather than what she wants you to do? Buddy, this is the tip of the iceberg, and and this is this thing that manipulative people do. Is She's going to make it seem like that when you move in with her that this pressure and all of this shit is going to end and you're going to be happy. You'll be happy for week 10 days, and then she's going to start with this shit again. You are laying the groundwork for this relationship where she's going to get to use her emotions as, as like this, this, this manipulative tool to get you to fucking sit up, beg, go for a walk, take out the trash and do all of this shit. I can tell you right now, dude, do not, I don't even need to read the rest of it. Don't even fucking move. Anyway, she's moving out of home, uh, to live in her grand. Dude, did you voice text this? I'm going to write, I'm going to read just how you wrote it. She is moving out of her home to live in her grandmother who passed away's house in the city. So she won't be paying rent. Okay. So her grandmother died and she wants you to move in there because it's her family home. She doesn't want me to stay over or for us to have sex there. Sir, did you really need, you really need my advice here? I respect this boundary. This, however, sucks as it means that the decision for us to have a sex life and private time together rests in my hands. Yeah, dude, she's, she's, she's fucking, she's boxing you in. I really want to move out, but it would cost me about $600 a month plus bills and food, and I'm not sure I can afford it. I have explained this to her, but she says that her paying bills in her grandmother's house makes us even. I'll be honest with you, I fucking hate this chick. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I also have an unplayed work placement abroad next year, which I need to save for that will cost me three to four thousand dollars. There you go, buddy. That's the carrot on the stick you need to be 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 chasing. My parents do not and will not financially support me. I really love this girl. And despite the obstacles of not having privacy and the distance between us, our relationship has been great up until this point. I'm starting to wonder if it'll work out. What do you think I should do? Um, I think you should stay at home and save up that three to four grand, and she should understand that. I think you should tell her how her pressuring you makes you feel. And if she doesn't acknowledge this and doesn't care about your feelings and it's all about her, it's the tip of the fucking iceberg. And consider yourself lucky that you're not living with her when you break up with her. That's it. Um, If I learned anything in the last few months of therapy, it's just like, you know, I have not acknowledged my feelings, and my feelings were not acknowledged my entire time growing up which is why I'm an angry person. Because when I start to feel feelings that I don't like in my head, I just have to go to anger because I never thought I could just be like, hey man, I really don't like that. Because I grew up in the sit down and shut the fuck up generation. So none of this makes you feel good. So you need to tell that to her. And there's no fucking way you move in with this chick ever under these circumstances where she is basically fucking uh, uh, using her emotions to get you to do what she wants to do and then having a fucking attitude. I mean, do you realize, like, seriously, if I can just take a second here, like that childish behavior that so many women get away with with the guys in their relationship that you basically have to dance to their fucking tune or they won't be happy because then what ends up happening is your happiness has to exist within the circle of their happiness. And at that point, you're no longer an individual You've lost yourself in the relationship. You've become like, like this emotional fucking hostage. And it's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. All right? So, sorry, I'm fucking... Got gas here. I don't know. I think I wolfed down this fucking piece of toast before this. I apologize. Um, belching up a storm here. Uh, yeah. So, fuck that. And any person, male or female, listening to this, don't ever move in with somebody if, if that is the way it's going down. Don't ever get involved in a business or a personal intimate relationship where the other person is using their fucking moods as a way to get you to do something that you do not want to do, but they wear you out because you just want to see them happy. Hey, fuck their happiness. 
Their happiness is not your responsibility. Your happiness is your responsibility. And you don't fucking move in with somebody until their happiness and your happiness intersect. That's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you on Thursday.